Hey guys, Sonic Smash here with a bit of a tutorial video for you guys. This is what I'm going to be doing on stuff like this. I'm going to be showing how to get the Project M mod on Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Normally I'm not a fan of modding by the way, but hey, this is actually a pretty damn good mod. And the way I'm doing things, really easy to use. So we're going to want to go to the website we'll need for this. I'll link it in the description below. And we're going to want to go down to the download section and get the latest version. 3.6-MF Hackless is the version in question we're going to want for this. Because that's the only way I can do things with my particular methods. For those who want the older versions, they're all down here. But we're going to want the latest build. So click here. And we're going to want to click download anyway. As far as I'm aware, there's no viruses on this whatsoever. I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be because it's a mod made by people who are official developers. Right click and save as. And I'm okay with saving it to the desktop for my purposes. Now, so long as it's going to take some time to download these files, because it will take a while, I may as well discuss what Project M actually is. Project M is Smash Bros. Brawl with the physics of the game before it, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Worth noting, if you're going to use the mod the way I'm doing things, you will need a 2GB SD card, or less. Any more, and it won't work. Proof of concept, I do have a 2GB. So since it's going to take a while to download all the files, I'll be right back. Alright, I am back. All files extracted and ready to go. So here's what we're going to want to do from here. Highlight all five of the extracted files. Three folders and two actual files. And move them all to the SD card. Copy them just in case something goes wrong. And keep in mind that as far as I'm aware, these need to be the only files you have in here or this straight up won't work. With that, once this gets done, I'm going to go ahead and boot up Smash Bros. Brawl. So, I'll be right back. Alright, before we move on, there's something I need to mention. If you see the message, the device inserted in the SD card slot cannot be used, then you need to eject the SD card and put it back in until you see this screen. Once you see this screen, you're good to go. Just to confirm that it is working properly. Right, I'll be right back. Alright, I am back, Brawl booted up and ready to go. Now, from here what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into the vault and go to Stage Builder. Now before you go and do this, boot up Brawl without inserting the SD card and delete all of the custom stages in the Stage Builder. That includes the ones you get by default when you boot up your first save file, i.e. the sample stages. You need to delete all of these before you go and do this. Once you've done that, Go back to the Wii menu, then put the SD card in and boot up Brawl again, and then continue as follows. Anyway, we want to go into the Stage Builder, and if you did this correctly, don't worry, you did not break your system, it's just loading up Project Dam. Right, so from here, what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and hit play. You need to actually do this off of the Wii Remote, not the Classic Controller, which is what I'm going to be using for this. I love that little message, because it's Brawl and Melee physics that a lot of the Melee fans are going to be hyped for this mod, and it's like, please secure the wrist strap to safely contain your hype. Because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to go breaking your Wii Remote out of hype for doing this. Alright, made a quick cut here because there is something I actually forgot to mention. Sometimes, you will get a freeze when trying to boot up Project M. If that happens, all you'll have to do is as follows. And then try again until it boots up successfully. With that, back to the main video. And the intro plays out as normal, so we know how that goes. Anyway, let's go ahead and set up rules. Stock is at 4. Timer is at 8 minutes. This is basically the melee competitive rules. Items are all off, all on none, just to show how this works. And let's get straight to the point.
Yes, this particular mod actually brings back Roy as well. But I'm actually going to go with my main for this purpose. And we'll go ahead and actually set this to level 9. Because I'm an asshole. Anyway, here are all the stages you can select from this. Some of these I don't think I've actually seen before. Castle Siege is from Fire Emblem, just making sure. Hyrule Castle 64 is sick. The Metal Cavern, for those who don't know, this is actually Metal Mario's stage. Brigade Origin, the Helm of Rumble Pulse, the Training Room for some reason. There's all the stages, and we're gonna go ahead and play an actual match on Melee Final Destination. So with that, I'll be right back so we can set up the match. Actually, before we go ahead and get started, there's something I want to show off. Wario was the only one to get an alternate costume in Brawl. In this mod, several characters get alternate costumes. Mario gets Dr. Mario, Luigi gets Mr. L from Super Paper Mario, which is pretty awesome. Peach, I believe, is a reference to Elder Princess Shroom from Partners in Time. Not sure. Bowser gets Dry Bowser, Yoshi gets nothing, Donkey Kong gets his Punch-Out Wii attire, which is pretty neat, Diddy Kong gets nothing, Captain Falcons, I believe, is a reference to the F-Zero anime, not sure, Ganondorf gets his Ocarina of Time design, at least I think that's what that one is, Toon Link gets his pajamas from Wind Waker, Link, Sheik, and Zelda also get their Ocarina of Time designs, Ice Climbers, I believe, is a reference to their Melee outfit, same goes for Fox and Falco, these two being, I believe, references to Star Fox 64. Wolf, I want to say, is a reference to Star Fox Assault. Not sure, though. Now, Mewtwo's is pretty cool. He was added to the mod, by the way. This is the exact same armor he wore in the first movie. And there are alternate colors for it, too. Yeah, that's pretty damn awesome. Lucario gets a Ryu outfit. Enough said. Pikachu gets Red's hat, Jigglypuff gets a bow, as a reference to the fact that in Gen 6, it is now a normal fairy type. Squirtle, not sure what that's a reference to, but this is Shiny Squirtle. Ivysaur gets nothing, oh yeah, the three Pokemon from Pokemon Trader are now separate characters. Shiny Ivysaur. Charizard, not sure what that's referencing. This is Gen 3 onward Shiny Charizard in Gen 2, he's purple. Samus gets different suits. This is her power suit, fusion suit, and I don't know what these two are. I want to say this is the dark suit and this is the light suit. Zero Suit Samus gets her Metroid Zero Suit, the original Metroid that is. This is fusions, and I'm not sure what this one is. Lucas, I believe, is a reference to Klaus in Mother 3. Ness gets Nintendo from the original Mother because our Earthbound is Mother 2. Pick gets his original Kid Icarus design. Pretty funny. Kirby gets nothing. Meta Knight gets something awesome. Yeah, that's freaking cool. DDD, as he's known here, because they took out the king part of his name. That, I believe, is his classic design. Ike's, I believe, is a reference to the Black Knight in Path of Radiance, or was it Radiant Dawn? Not sure. Marv's, I believe, is a reference to Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. Roy gets nothing, he was also added to the mod. Olimar gets nothing. Rob gets a couple references, including the reference to the Virtual Boy. Game & Watch gets nothing. Snakes, I believe, is his original Metal Gear Solid outfit. And Sonic's, I believe, is a reference to the Sonic Riders games. But with that, excuse me while I get a real match set up. So for real this time, I'll be right back. Actually, there is one more thing I may as well show off. If you hold L on certain stages, this being one of them, you actually get Rainbow Cruise from Melee for this particular stage. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so with that, I'll be right back for the real match. Alright, characters selected, rules all set, everything ready to go. So to quote Guilty Gear, Heaven or Hell, let's rock! And Yoshi. 
Some moves were also changed going into Project M. Sonic's down aerial is a bit faster, in terms of startup, and I mean a good deal faster. His forward aerial is now a flipping axe kick as opposed to the spinning drill he used to have. The spin dash was changed to be more of a poke and nothing more. The spring jump was nerfed in the sense that you can no longer air dodge after using it until you land. Air dodging was also brought, up, brought back to how it was in Melee. Sorry, I tried to focus here. The Down Smash also had a change in its animation as well, which I believe also changed the properties of the Down Smash to be a good deal better than his Brawl version. But compared to Smash 4, Sonic is much better there than he is in Project M, although he's still really good here too. In Brawl he was decent, but here he's real good. Well, not real real good. Yeah, and that's one major problem with melee physics, folks. The fact that Yoshi doesn't have a decent upbeat for recovery, unlike most characters, means he has to rely on air dodging. And that right there can just screw him over. That's pretty much Yoshi's only major weakness that's critical. <laughs> Sonic's homing attack was also adjusted to be weaker but faster, and as far as I'm aware, you can no longer up B in conjunction with the homing attack. Bonk. There's that homing attack working wonders. The up smash was also changed to be a single hit. Yeah, you can no longer up B after the homing attack. Damn. So let's pick one or the other. Back air. Oh, is that weaker than it was? Oh, I'm thinking of the smash four back air. Never mind. That should do it, yep. So there we go, there's an example of Project M in action. So with that, thank you all for watching this little tutorial. I hope you guys can make some good use of this and have some fun with Project M yourselves. Till next time, later guys.